I started primary school when I was five years of age. When I was in first class, our neighbour, John Joe McGraw, who lived in the townland of Fern, said to my mother that he does a school run for our road every afternoon and would be happy to include Nicholas as he was passing the gate anyway. John Joe McGraw always lit that internal flame within me. At that moment, when I stood out on the pavement, things began to crumble for me and break in too because I knew I was never going to see him again and he was gone. It was like this light bulb was suddenly switched off and everything became dark. John Joe McGrath's death had such an impact on me because my guardian angel figure had died and therefore this led to this almighty depression. I was 10 years of age when the depression set in. He was very long suffering and patient and he never shouted or made a noise or anything like that and was so well mannered. It wasn't until I was 13 years of age that I was referred on to Professor Michael Fitzgerald in Dublin who subsequently gave me a diagnosis of Asperger syndrome, autism spectrum disorder. In September 2003, Nicholas moved on to secondary school. I was exempt from Irish, so therefore when the other students were having Irish, I had resource classes. And when I was in resource geography class one day, I broke down in front of Brenda because the critical inner voice in my mind was telling me all sorts of abusive things about myself. I remember one particular day when he was very, very emotional and Brenda came to me about it. I needed an escape from the critical inner voice in the mind and soon found out that trains became that escape for me. Pat and John Burke were actually dairy farmers and they lived right beside the level crossing and never once did they hunt me away or silence me on my interest in trains. They actually let me continue until I felt I had enough. I, for various reasons, decided to up sticks and move from Emily to North Tipperary. My first reaction was one of shock. A hundred different emotions went through my mind when I heard that, but the main one was worry, and I just hoped that it wor would work out. Anyway, a teacher came up to me and clapped his hands in front of me, telling me to wake up and go off to my class. I just felt absolutely awful because it was for purely selfish reasons I moved my family from Emily to Clark Jordan. He was extremely well behaved and teachers love well behaved children and when you're very well behaved people don't often see your difficulties. In fifth year the teacher then turned on the projector and all of a sudden I saw a PowerPoint slide on the screen illustrating how to say a particular thing in the German language. And as a result, I adopted the PowerPoint method for all of my Leaving Cert subjects in school. Nicholas had been accepted into Ballyfermot College of Further Education at this stage for the course on TV and film, provided he passed his Leaving Cert. So I drew a tunnel and I told Nicholas there was a light at the end of the tunnel and that Ballyfermot was written across that light. But there was a hurdle in the middle and that hurdle was the Leaving Cert. And all he had to do was pop over that hurdle and he'd have a free run to Ballyfermot. One of the modules that Nicholas had to do in college required him to make a short film. So he made a silent film and Nicholas discovered that there was a college film festival in Somerset, Kentucky. Anyway, Nicholas won the Spirit Award as the best foreign film to depict independent filmmaking. In 2012, I graduated from Ballyfermot College with a higher national diploma in television operations and production. After being declined jobs, I began setting up a video production venture, producing corporate videos for people. Charles Maguire taught me to breathe properly because I had been suffering from hyperventilation which is excessive breathing through stress 
and this causes fear and it is the fear that allows the darkness back in. Charles Maguire completely changed my life. Anyway, I remember Nicholas came back and he was a completely different person. He was like standing straight, he wasn't dragging his feet, he just looked happier, his eyes were brighter. It was just amazing really. The Cahillan family entrusted the story of Gordon Lord Byron to Nicholas. And with their help and with Tom Hogan's help, Nicholas completed the documentary on Gordon Lord Byron and he won two awards, one for editing and one for foreign feature in a documentary festival in Hollywood. We were in LA, we were in Hollywood for 10 days. And so it was an adventure that the two of us were on together. Uh, I remember at the awards anyway, um, Nicholas immediately like turned on all the quirky movements and everything and all the like all jittery excitedness. And it was kind of in that moment that I sort of became really proud of Nicholas. So I just sat back and I just said, that's my brother. The importance of family support. Why is that so important to you? Well, I'm just very proud of my brother. You know, he's, he's, he's been making films and documentaries since the age of 14. And he's just excellent at what he does. And I just, I'm so proud of him. So it's great just uh, to be here with him. <laughs> yes. is, this, is this the longest trip that you've taken with him? I'm humbled how many people have supported me throughout the production of this documentary film. I am now 28 years of age and full of confidence for the future.